announcement, if I can. I want to address the recent allegations that have been made against me. Uh, as you probably know, the Attorney General is doing an independent review, and I will fully cooperate with that review. Now, the lawyers say I shouldn't say anything when you have a pending review until that review is over. I understand that. Uh, I'm a lawyer, too. But I want New Yorkers to hear from me directly on this. First, I fully support a woman's right to come forward. And I think it should be encouraged in every way. I now understand that I acted in a way that made people feel uncomfortable. It was unintentional, and I truly and deeply apologize for it. I feel awful about it, and frankly, I am embarrassed by it. And that's not easy to say, but that's the truth. But this is what I want you to know, and I want you to know this from me directly. I never touched anyone inappropriately. I never touched anyone inappropriately. I never knew at the time that I was making anyone feel uncomfortable. I never knew at the time I was making anyone feel uncomfortable. And I certainly never, ever meant to offend anyone or hurt anyone or cause anyone any pain. That is the last thing I would ever want to do. I ask the people of this state to wait for the facts from the Attorney General's report before forming an opinion. Get the facts, please, before forming an opinion. And the Attorney General is doing that review. I will fully cooperate with it. And then you will have the facts. And make a decision when you know the facts. I also want you to know that I have learned from what has been an incredibly uh, difficult situation for me as well as other people. And I've learned an important lesson. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for whatever pain I caused anyone. I never intended it. Uh, and I will be the better for this experience. Thank you. Questions? Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Governor. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. So I actually have two questions. Um, my first one is, if a member of your administration had done what you are currently accused of and had and have admitted to, what would you tell them and what would be a satisfactory disposition for you? Well, let's be clear on the facts. First, uh, we haven't gotten the facts. Uh, let the Attorney General do a review and let's get the facts. And that's what I said uh, in my statement to New Yorkers. I'm a former Attorney General. I've been through a situation too many times where uh, everybody has an opinion because they read this, they read this, and then all of a sudden the facts come out and it's a different situation. So wait for the facts before you form an opinion. Uh, and as I said, my, my behavior here, uh, I never touched anyone inappropriately. I never knew at the time that I was making anyone feel uncomfortable. And if I ever did make uh, people feel uncomfortable, which... Uh, I now understand that I have. Uh, I apologize for it. 
Uh, but then let the Attorney General's office actually review the facts. Next. Yes, thank you. Oh. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Next question, operator. On the issue of sexual harassment, uh, a number of women have obviously accused you of acts, including groping, including overt sexual harassment of employees. You have pled for people to take an investigation into account. But you were in those rooms. You know the truth. So can you tell the people of the state of New York, yes or no, did you do the things you were accused of? No. No. And that's why I said uh, when, when people suggested, uh, uh, yeah, put it very simply, no. All of no. The sexual harassment, that's right. All of that's that. right. Yes. If, if Tish James's report comes back and finds the contrary, considering that you've said zero tolerance for sexual harassment in this state, will you discipline yourself or consider resigning? Yeah, the report can't say anything different because I didn't do anything wrong. Governor, the New York over. Times put out a, uh, a story a couple weeks ago where they interviewed 80 people either close to you or had worked with you, and they detailed accounts that you had said things like anti-trans slurs and also something to the effect of saying that Jews lived in effing tree houses. Did you say those things? And if I not, never I said any such things, and I told the Times that I never said any such thing. Uh, they, uh, they printed slurs and slander. Uh, and you'd have to ask them why they did that. Why would people say those things that you had said them? If people say a lot of things. Them? People <laughs> say a lot of things in politics. Uh, that's why do people say things? Who knows? People are venial. People want attention. People are angry. People are jealous. Who knows why people spread rumors? Governor, today at the New York State Fair, there are hundreds of that Especially as others feed ugly stories to the press. But I cooperated with a review, and I can now finally share the truth. My attorney, who is a non-political former federal prosecutor, has done a response to each allegation. And the facts are much different than what has been portrayed. That document is available on my website. If you are interested, please Take the time to read the facts and decide for yourself. First, I want you to know directly from me that I never touched anyone inappropriately or made inappropriate sexual advances. I am 63 years old. I have lived my entire adult life in public view. That is just not who I am. And that's not who I have ever been. There is one complaint that has been made that bothered me most. That was a complaint made by a young woman, Charlotte Bennett, who worked in my office. And it's important to me that you fully understand the situation. Charlotte worked in my office last year as an assistant. She was smart, talented, and eager to learn. She identified herself to me as a survivor of sexual assault. She said that she came to work in my administration because of all the progress we had made in fighting sexual assault. She talked about the personal trauma that she endured and how she was handling it. I could see how it had affected her. I could see her pain. People now ask me, why was I even talking to this young woman if I knew she was dealing with such issues? Why did I even engage with her? That is the obvious and fair question, and one I have thought a lot about. The truth is that her story resonated deeply with me. I had heard the same story before with the same ugliness, the same injustice, the same damage. Not only had I heard the story before, I had lived with the story before. My own family member is a survivor of sexual assault in high school. I have watched her live and suffer with the trauma. I would do anything to make it go away for her. But it never really goes away. 
I spent countless days and nights working through these issues with her and therapists and counselors. I'm governor of the state of New York, but I felt powerless to help and felt that I had failed her. I couldn't take the pain away. I still can't. And this young woman brought it all back. She is about the same age. I thought I had learned a lot about the issue from my family's experience. I thought I could help her work through a difficult time. I did ask her questions I don't normally ask people. I did ask her how she was doing and how she was feeling. And I did ask questions to try to see if she had positive support of dating relationships. I know too well the manifestations of sexual assault trauma and the damage that it can do in the aftermath. I was trying to make sure she was working her way through it the best she could. I thought I had learned enough and had enough personal experience to help her, but I was wrong. I have heard Charlotte and her lawyer, and I understand what they are saying, but they read into comments that I made and draw inferences that I never meant. They ascribe motives I never had. And simply put, they heard things that I just didn't say. Charlotte, I want you to know that I am truly and deeply sorry. I brought my personal experience into the workplace, and I shouldn't have done that. I was trying to help. Obviously, I didn't. I am even more sorry that I further complicated the situation. My goal was the exact opposite. I wish nothing but good for you and for all survivors of sexual assault. There is another complaint I want to address from a woman in my office who said that I groped her in my home office. Let me be clear, that never happened. She wants anonymity and I respect that. So I am limited but what I can say. But her lawyer has suggested that she will file a legal claim for damages. That will be decided in a court of law. Trial by newspaper or biased reviews are not the way to find the facts in this matter. I welcome the opportunity for a full and fair review before a judge and a jury because this just did not happen. Other complaints. you on coronavirus, but first I'd like to start with the news of the day. Given back in March, you said that if the investigation confirmed the allegations against Governor Cuomo, then he should resign. So will you now call on him to resign given the investigator said the 11 women were credible? I stand by that statement. Are you now calling on him to resign? Yes. And if he doesn't resign, do you believe he should be impeached and removed from office? Let's take one thing at a time here. I think he should resign. I understand that the state legislature may decide to impeach. I don't know that for a fact. I've not read all that data. And he's using a photo of you embracing him in his self-defense to say that these are commonplace kind of embraces that he made and the allegations against him. Do you condone that? Look, I'm not going to flyspeck this. I am sure there are some embraces that were totally innocent. But ap apparently, the Attorney General decided there were things that weren't. And death government operations. And wasting energy on distractions is the last thing that state government should be doing. And I cannot be the cause of that. New York tough means New York loving. And I love New York. And I love you. And everything I have ever done has been motivated by that love. And I would never want to be unhelpful in any way. And I think that given the circumstances, the best way I can help now 
is if I step aside and let government get back to governing. And therefore, that's what I'll do. Because I work for you. And doing the right thing is doing the right thing for you. Because as we say, it's not about me. It's about we.